in this video we will see how to install python and we will also discuss all the different data types of python their methods and functions and we will learn how to write functions and where do we use functions so if we learn like data types and functions we should be in a good position to write like small to medium size programs Now to download python first we go to python.org now this is the official website for python so we come down here and we click on downloads now this one here is a latest version of python so we have we have version 3 now within version 3 we have like many sub version so this is the latest one and now this is for the windows if you have linux you can come down and click on this one you have mac then you can come here if you have any other operating system you can come here now python has made the installation process very simple we just have to follow the steps now for some reason if you don't want the latest sub version of uh, version 3 we can scroll down here here we can see there is a sub version like 3 0.8.11, 3.7.11, 6.11. So we can download from here if you want these subversions. But we're gonna download the latest one. So we come here and click on this one. We open it from here. Now this is a very important step. Here we need to click this button here. We have to click uh, here. Add Python to 3.92 pad. This is very important because if you don't do this one, then our interpreter is gonna be sitting in like one path and our file is gonna be in a different path. So if you try to execute it, it will show a lot of errors. So it is best to click this one here. It makes our life so easy. And then we go click on install now. Yes. So our Python is installed. We're gonna click close. Okay, so we're gonna come down here and we're gonna write Python. So click on this one. So this opens up what is called Python shell. Now in Python shell, we experiment with the code. We try to see if the logic is working or not on the fly. So we never write the whole programs in Python shell. So that is what we use Python shell for. Let's close this one for now. Come back down here, type Python again, and we open Python idle. Now, now this is called Python idle. Now what is Python idle? Uh, first of all, we need to see what is IDE. So idle is a type of IDE. So we're gonna see soon what is IDE. Let's go to Google and IDEs for Python. So these all are the list of IDEs as we can see here. If we click on this one, we can see more IDEs here. Out of these, some of the IDEs are free and some of them are like paid. We have to, uh, we have to pay to use it. But uh, out of these, PyCharm is very popular, but we're gonna use idle. Now this IDE, is installed as a part of the Python installation. So it is a free version. And um, so we will use idle because idle is, it provides us everything we need to, we need to write um, like basic to uh, complex program. So we got, we're gonna use idle. Now let's come back down here. So what is IDE? What is idle? Why do we even need idle, right? So now before people used to write programs in a text editor like any of the text editor and then compile it and run it but um, as the programming becomes very complex text editor does not provide us everything we need to write a complex program it does not provide us all the necessities all the all the functionality we need to write complex program so we need more than a text editor to write complex program that is where ide comes in and idle is a is a type of IDE provided to us by the Python. 
So what does idle provide extra than the text editor which we need to write a complex programming? So idle will it provide us text editor for sure to write uh, our uh, program. It provides us debugger to find out the errors and fix the error. We use debugger. It provides us with a interpreter to execute our program. It also provides us Python shell, the one we just saw earlier, where we can experiment with our code to see if the our logic is running or not. It provides us complete documentation of Python 3. It also provides us something called syntax highlighting. So when we write code in idle, we see like the functions are colored in purple. So functions in purple. Strings are colored in green. Keywords So it provides a syntax highlighting. So we can see like when we are writing code in idle, we can see the functions are in like different color. They are like pink and then the output is in blue. The strings are like green and then the keywords are like in orange. So it's like more readable and we will like we can know by when we are writing that, okay, this is a function and this is a string. So it makes it so it makes coding a little easier. And then we have something called auto completion. Auto completion. So if we if we type like print and we press tab, it will give us like all the suggestions we need to complete the that functions. So this is what idle provide us. So as we can see, this is way more functionality than a simple text editor. So simple text editor doesn't provide us all these things. So we will use all these things functionality. And believe me, like when we are writing complex code you know these things makes our life so easier like these things makes our life so easier so let's open up the idle again so this is our idle so if you write here print hello world so we can see the print is like purple in color that's that's the function string is green in color right if we come here and press enter the output is yellow the output is blue in color and if we use any key um keyword keywords like if is a keyword if else so that is orange in color right so that makes it like more readable and when we are writing we will know uh, this is a function or whether it's a is a keyword or uh, so it makes it little easier to write code and uh, and again, this is we are writing this code on in a Python shell. So Python shell is also a part of idle. Idle provides us a Python shell where we can experiment with our code. And um, now, question may arise: Why cannot we write the whole code in a Python shell instead of using a text editor? Because idle provides us Python shell and text editor. Well, in Python shell, we can write small part of the code and see if the code is working or not. But when we close the Python shell, the code is gone. We cannot save the uh, the code. We cannot reuse the code again. That's why we use text editor in a uh, in an idle to write and save our code. Okay. So we will come here and we will write a small program and see how it goes. So we will write a small program. So def is a keyword we use to write a function. So we will write Let's give a name to a function to say hello one. So in this function, we're gonna write print something. Hello, how are you? And then 
here we wanna call that function hello one and then we will just we'll save the file and let's save as first program dot py save it and then we will run from here we press run module we can even press f5 so run module and here we see the result hello how are you so that's how we write a small program and we run it now when we write a comment we use hash anything that comes after hash sign is a comment so interpreter when it's uh, interpreting the code when you see the hash so it doesn't touch the hash it doesn't it doesn't do anything to the hash anything written after the hash will stay as it is so we write comment to make the uh, program more readable so that when when you write a, like a um, a long program and some other programmer has to come and work on your program so he can go through line by line and he can go through your um, comment and understand the logic so it makes it makes uh, the life of that program very easy so you know what's going on with the program okay so we can use hash to write the the comment so we can start from here enter hash and then we can write this is our first program we can also write the comment at the end of the line so we can put one hash here and I can write this is the print functions and we can also write the comment if the comment is big and it has to uh, has to cover like multi lines so we can use either single triple code or double triple code so we can go one two three so this is a single triple code and we can write here anything like okay this this is is multi-line comment something blah 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 something here and then blah, blah. and then we close it with single triple code like this so now when the other programs they're gonna go through our code they can read what is uh, on this line so they will know what this program is doing they can read this one and they can read this multi-line comment so we save it let's run it again run module so we can see this is our result here so interpreter when when it see the comment it doesn't do anything it just leave it as it is so it is for our own our purpose so it we can read it we know what's going on with the code okay now before we talk about data types let's look at identifiers now identifiers can be variable name function name method name class name object name so any name we use in the python is called identifier so we can classify identifier as variable name function name method name class name and object name right so let's look at variable name now when we use any data in the python we have to store that data in a variable and we have to give that variable a name so that is variable name right so now when we want to refer that data somewhere in the coding we can just use that variable name to access that data so we need a variable name to access that data so we can give a variable name say for example first name and we can store some name here like John okay so first name here is a variable name 
right so when we need to access this data john we will just use the first name in the in the program now when we give a name to a variable we need to follow certain rules python has given certain rules which we have to follow to give variable name it's very much like like our name you know like uh, in many countries and in many culture they follow certain rules to name a person like we see certain kind of name in one country and then different kinds of name in some different country like in my country in my culture um, when a baby is born like we we go to a high priest and so he will open up a, a holy book and the first letter the, which we see on the left side of the book like on the top the first letter we use that letter to name a baby right so different cultures have different ways of naming a baby so in python also when we name a variable name we have to we have to follow certain rules so let us see what are those rules first one it can so python can python's variable name can only have lowercase a to z or capital a to z any number from 0 to 9 or underscore other than this we cannot use any other character we cannot use we cannot use like dash or we cannot use dollar sign when we name a variable name only these characters we have to use it number two it cannot start with a digit it always have to start with either a letter like a to z or we can even start a variable name with an underscore but no, no it cannot start with a digit right number three is variable name are case sensitive so if we have a variable name first name and first name like this then these two are different variable names these are not the same variable name right so variable name is case sensitive number four we cannot use reserved words to name a variable name now what are the reserved words like if else try accept finally in it class def etc these all are the reserved words so we cannot name our variable name based on these names that's a no no we cannot do that it will give us interpreter will give us error so let's see let's try making giving some variable name here okay so we can write first name is equal to john so that's a valid variable name if we first name and enter so it give us a answer john it give us it give, it give us the value that is stored into that variable name or we can write a is equal to 10 that's a valid variable name too so when we type a it give us 10 or we can have b is equal to 2.3 if we type b it give us answer 2.3 that is stored into that variable name if we try to start our variable name with letter let's try sorry with the digits let's see so if we go one first name is equal to john it gives us an error so we cannot start a variable name with a digit let's try to start a variable name with a underscore john so when we type first underscore first name it gives us the answer john so our variable name can start with letter or with underscore but not with a digit now let's try to make a variable name first name and then use dollar sign is equal to john so it gives us error so we only have to use the letters like lowercase a to z uppercase a to z or digits 0 to 9 or underscore we cannot use any other character then we have so we just saw 
how we should name a variable in. So in a variable name, we can use only letter, only characters, lowercase a to z, uppercase a to z, digits from 0 to 9 or underscore. And it cannot start with a digit. It can start only with a letter or with an underscore. It cannot, we cannot name our variable name with any reserved or the keyword digits. We can, we can even have just the underscore. We can have underscore as a variable name. Let's look at the, so we come back here. This is our Python shell. So if um, I can give variable name, we give variable name as a is equal to 10. We type a, enter and give us 10. We can also use underscore as a variable name. So I will use underscore as a variable name and I will store the value 20 in it. Right, and then I will type underscore, it gives us the answer 20. So we can use just a single underscore as a variable name too. Now, underscore has a very special meaning in Python. Now, underscore is used, is more than just a variable name. We can use an underscore as more than a. So, underscore, we can do a lot of things in, in Python. So if we come back here and open the Python shell. So underscore has a special meaning in Python. It is more than a variable name. So if we have like a, a big expression, like say something like this, and we add this one. Now, if we have to use this number, this number or maybe a number longer. Yeah, if you have to use this number again and again in our application. So we have to remember this number and then, and use this number again and again. So the, the best way to do is, if I just type underscore here, it will access this number right here like this. So underscore will give us the result of our previous expression in the Python shell. So if I have like before something like this plus this number. So I will just type underscore, enter and it will access the previous number, the result of the previous expression. So I can also go underscore, that is, so underscore will be this number here. So underscore will access this number and I can add, if I want to add something 10, like this, look at this. So 10 is added to this number here. Now if I type underscore again, enter, it will access the previous uh, result of the expression. So now underscore is this one. So if I want to access this number again, I will type underscore. So that will be this number here. And then I can add or do multiply or whatever I need to do. Any cal I will just go 20. So it will give us a different number like this. So. And uh, we can also use underscore like in the sense, say if we have a variable, any variable like A and we store the value like this. So if I type A, I get this answer. Now I can also store this number like this. I can just go one underscore zero 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 underscore zero zero zero. So this way it is like that number is more readable. So I, I know I can see the three zero and the underscore and three zero. So we can also use underscore in this way. So if I type A, so this number I see, okay? So this is only for us, so we can we can see the number more clearly. So in this way also we can use underscore. So if we ever if our variable start with one underscore, it is called private. If it is like one underscore and then first name, that is our variable name, it is called private. Now it is more like a gentleman agreement. It's like we're requesting the other programmer whoever will, whoever will work on our program that please don't change the value of this variable now the other program can always change the value of this variable but we are just requesting please don't change it and if it, if the variable name start with one underscore it is also used for internal use so i will i will show you exactly what does that mean so if you open the idle here, let's create a file. 
let me open it again python So let's create a new file. Def. So def is a keyword we use to create a function or the method. And then we'll give it a name like regular one. Let's give it a regular function one right and then colon it is returning this is a regular function we have a second function we use a def keyword to create a function or the method and this time it's gonna start the name gonna start with underscore so this is irregular irregular function return this is special function so we have two function one is regular the other one start with the underscore and they are returning some string here so let me save it save as program 2.py so it has to end with the extension.py now this program 2.py is a module and this module has two functions within it so to access any of these functions we have to import the module. So we will see how to import. There are two ways to import the module. We're gonna see, let's go to the Python shell. So this is our Python shell. Here we're gonna go. So this is one way of importing the module from program one, import star. Let me double check the name. So it's program two. Okay. From program two, import star. Enter. So I'm telling Python to import all the functions within the module program two. Now we're gonna access that functions within the module two. So we have a regular function and irregular function. So regular function one so when i type regular function one it shows me the return value which is a string this is a regular function let's try to access the irregular irregular function so it's saying it giving me, giving me an error that irregular function is not defined right so if we use a variable name or function name with the underscore that start with the underscore then we cannot access that function if we import the module this way like this is one way of importing the module so i will show you how to do that how to import it again function okay so there is the other way of importing the module in this way we have to write import program to enter and now we have to access the function using the program uh, the module name so the module name is program2 dot function name was regular function1 right so it shows me the the return string let's go with the program2 program2 there's a module name dot underscore irregular function right and then okay so this way so this is a special function this is the return value of the the irregular function remember the the variable and the function name that start with underscore right so when we use when we use a variable name that start with the one underscore 
it is called private so we're requesting the other program please don't change the value for this one and it is also used for internal use so it's best if we avoid if you try to avoid this kind of name number two if the variable name start with two underscore for example we have underscore and then one more underscore and then the variable name this is called data mangling in data mangling python interpreter whenever whenever it will come across this kind of variable name it will change it will rename the variable name right so our underscore first name will be renamed to underscore class name underscore underscore variable name let's remember that so underscore first name will be renamed into underscore class name underscore underscore variable name we will see this in example and when we use underscore underscore variable name it makes it it makes it very private and the concept is called data mangling so let's go back to our idle and see let's come back here let's delete all this and let's create a class now class is a keyword we use to create a class and then we give a name to a class what name are you going to use for the class so we're going to name as class one and then colon now so, uh, you have to remember these are the these are the standard syntax we will use to create a class or the functions function is used using this now, even if you guys don't understand what's going on like what is class what is method it's okay like we will talk about all this in detail in the future classes so def underscore underscore init underscore underscore self so what we did here is we created a constructor if you don't understand it's okay don't worry about it i'm just trying to explain you how the variable name with one underscore and the variable name with two underscore works okay again this is a standard def is a standard keyword in it is a standard when we use a constructor and self is a standard we have to use self here okay we come down here now now this is a method this one we created is a method and this is a class we use a def keyword to create uh, to create functions and method both okay now now the difference between uh, function and method function and method are exactly the same right for both we use a def keyword to create it the only difference is when we create a function outside of a class it is called function when we create a function within a class it becomes method that's the only difference right so right here we, we created this function within this class class one so this function becomes a method so we call it a method okay and then we create a variable a give it a value 10 we create a second variable we give it a value 20 now within this class within this method when we create a variable we have to use self plus dot self dot b this is something like this is a standard way of doing it we will see further in detail you know later on but don't worry don't worry about it if you don't understand dot underscore underscore c is equal to 30 so pay attention here this variable these two are regular variable a and b but this variable has two underscore in front of it so this variable so in this is called data mangling so interpreter will change the name of this variable so we will see how how it is changed okay we come here so our class is done now we're going to create an object let's say we create object one from this class one like this and we save this we come back to our python shell now our object one we can use object one to access all the variables we created within a class so variables which we created within the class are a b and c let's see if we can access it so object one dot a uh, object one is not defined okay let me 
update one is equal to class one and we will save it and let me run it okay so object one dot a so we access the value 10 now let x is the variable b we access the variable b this x is the variable c so the error we get is class one object has no attribute c the reason it says it has no attribute c is because interpreter has changed the value of the variable it has renamed it so to access that variable c this is what we have to do object one dot I wrote it here like how to access it so we have to write underscore class name underscore underscore variable name that's how interpreter rename it so this is this this format we will use it here we come back here in the Python shell so object one dot so here we write underscore class name so our class name is let's see the class name here class one so class one is our class name so underscore class one underscore underscore variable name our variable name is c see that so when we actually try to access the variable using this format we got the answer right here right so this is something we should know you know sometime um, it is uh, it is asked in the in the interview like what is data mangling right so we can tell them when we start a variable name with two underscore then the concept is called data mangling in which interpreter will change will rename the variable name like this it will rename it as underscore class name underscore underscore variable name so it is something we should we should know okay then number three underscore underscore first name underscore underscore now if the variable starts with two underscore and ends with two underscore right so this variable name is something that is created by the python we, we should not when we create a variable name we should not use it we should not use this format to create a variable name this is something python creates it it is language specific and we can use this to create a constructor to create an operator overloading so this is specific to the language created by the language so it is created by the python language again this is for internal use again and it can be used for operator overloading we will see this in detail later on like what is operator overloading okay so if the variable start with underscore underscore ends with underscore underscore then we can use this for operator overloading and this is something created by the python for its own purpose so if we can come here and see see how we use this underscore underscore init underscore underscore now this is something this is like a keyword created by the python so this when we use this variable it creates a it creates a constructor right let's go to number four variable name that is first name underscore so if the variable name is followed by one underscore then what happened i will show you if the so if the variable name is followed by one underscore now we have keywords in the python like class is a keyword def is a keyword uh, if is a keyword else is a keyword try is a keyword now if you want to use the variable name same as the keyword name then we can follow that variable name with the underscore for example let's come back here now class is a standard keyword in the python if i try to use the class as a variable name and try to store some value in it i will get error right because interpreter is saying that okay class is a keyword we cannot use it as a variable name but i still want to use class as a variable name then i'm gonna use the variable name followed by one underscore 
and then I will store some value in it. Let's see what happened this time. See, now this time it works. Right? So if we want to use the keyword as a variable name, then we can follow that keyword by one underscore and we can use that variable name. Okay. Now, when we use variable name in a Python, it is it, it is a it is a good practice to use a multi-word variable name. Variable name that makes some sense like by looking at the variable name okay what 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 value is stored in this we can what value is stored in this variable name now we can use a is equal to john right or a is equal to 10 but we, we don't know by looking at the variable name a we don't know what is stored within the within a okay but if i use here first name is equal to john i can write this way right first name is equal to john now first name is also a variable name a is also a variable name now by looking at this variable name, I know what kind of value is stored in this variable name, right? So it is a good practice to use multi-word descriptive variable name. Now, when we use multi-word variable name, there are three methods which can be used to create this variable name. Okay. Now, there is no one particular standard that okay, we have to follow this standard or the other standard, but in some companies, they follow certain naming conventions, right? So we should know all these three methods. So if a company said, okay, we want to name all the variables name using this method. So you should know what does that mean? You know, you should be able to uh, uh, create all the variables name using that, that by that method. So the first one is called camel case. Now it is not specific to Python. Like in all the programming language, you will hear the word camel case. What is camel case, right? So we should know these terms, you know, when we are in the programming. So camel case is camel case we use when um, say our variable name is first name. Okay. So we write first name. If we write the variable name in this format, if we write the variable name in this format. Then it is called a camel case so the first letter of the first word is is lowercase the second the first letter of the second word is capital case so this is called camel case then we have something called pascal case here we will write the variable name as first letter of the first word capital second letter okay first letter of the first word capital first letter of the second word is also is also capital so in pascal case this is how we write the variable name and then there is a third one snake case here first word underscore second word so this is a format for the snake case now it is good to know all this format you know like we can write in we can write any format but some companies they they require certain naming convention so they will tell you okay we want all our variables name using camel case or the pascal case or the snake case so you should know what does that mean right okay let's look at the data types now data types so these are the different data types so first we're gonna see integer So first we're gonna see integer any value which we use in python so any numerical value which we use in python with a decimal point is called integer so one two three any number seven six whatever number so these all are integer okay so we can write a variable name a is equal to 908 so this is an integer value right and a is a variable name so we call a as an integer integer type integer variable type okay we store integer value in a so a becomes integer data type so this is a integer data type any value numerical value which we use without decimal becomes a integer data type now integer can be further divided into binary data type
optical data type hexa decimal data type now binary the format of writing binary data type is it starts with zero either small b or capital b like this and it can have only digits zero and one not more than that it has a base of it has a base two so base two means it only will have value zero and one if you write like a value two, if you write two then it will it will give us an error so base two so this is called binary data type or we can write zero capital b then zero one zero one zero one right octal data type the format of this is we write zero and then small o or a capital o small o or capital o and we can write number any number within from zero to seven it has a base of eight so it accept only value zero two seven so it will accept zero one two three four five six seven we cannot use a value eight it will give us error now in computer system the numbering start from zero so if we count from zero to seven there are eight digits right so it is a base of eight so we can ha only use value between zero and seven we can also write zero capital o and we can write any number here it will accept it from zero to seven then we have hexadecimal data type the format of this is zero either small x or capital x and the value from zero to nine or the letter from a to f so we can write any number here whatever and then we can write a e f like this okay it has a base of 16 the value we use here is from 0 to 9 and the letter a to f now a to f it can be small or the upper it doesn't it doesn't make any difference okay now you can see this one here in the python shell So let's do first our binary. So we type zero, small b, and then zero one zero one. Enter twenty one. So when we write any any like when we write binary here or octal here or hexadecimal, the interpreter will convert into integer and give us the integer result of it. Now let's try again zero. This time we write capital B, value zero one zero one zero one. It gives us value ten. If we try again zero b if you try to write 0, 0, 0, 1 and try to use the letter 2 see what happened so we cannot use anything other than 0 and 1 it has to be 0 and 1 let's try our octal now 0 we can write small o and we can write value 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 up to 7 and this value here the output is an integer value of this octal value the output is always in an integer so interpreter will look at the binary value, octal value, hexadecimal value. It will convert into integer type and it will show the result in the output. Okay, let's try again. Zero, O. This time, let's try writing seven, eight, nine. Error. We cannot use the letter eight or nine. It has to be seven from zero to seven, right? Let's try hexadecimal zero, X, and we can write some number and then def it gives us the integer output of the value let's try again 0 x this time we write so we can write from a to f the letters okay let's try g h i it gives us error so we cannot write anything other than uh, letters a to f and the digit 0 to 9 okay now if we have now 
if we have any of these hexadecimal octal or the binary value in a string format right if we have a, in a string format if we come back again here to our shell so if we write our any of the uh, octal value or binary hexadecimal value within us as a string format it is not automatically converted into a decimal decimal value the way we just saw here we say all this value when we write like this 0 b 0 1 0 1 python will convert into a integer value but if i have the same value in a, within a string within a single quote so anything within a singular double quote is a string 0 b 0 1 0 1 so see this value is not converted into, into integer to convert this value into integer we have a form we have a format so we go int 0 b 0 1 0 1 single quote close comma we can use here 2 and for the result 5 so when i use 2 here i'm telling the interpreter that you need to look at the first two letters in within this string so interpreter will look at this num this letter and it will see it's a 0 and b so it knows this is a binary so it uh, convert it into an integer from binary to integer but if we don't use this two number here it will give us error okay let's try again end 0 this time let's use octal value 1 2 3 4 5 something so if i just close it like this it will give us error because interpreter doesn't know what's the value within this single code so we we need to tell the interpreter what kind of value it is here so we will write we will do this again end o 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay this time we can write 8 here why because octal is a is a base 2 system there are there can only be from 0 to 7 that is 8 digits so we have to write 8 here so this way interpreter will know okay i have to look at uh, the number within the single code is a octal value so it gives us the decimal value of that again end code 0 hex 1 2 3 d e f right so this time i have to tell the interpreter okay the num uh, the the number within the single code is a hexadecimal value so i'm going to use 16 because hexadecimal is a base 16 like this so it will convert it into a integer like this okay we have now if if you want to convert like um like binary data uh, binary into hexadecimal or hexadecimal into octal so we have a function for that so we use uh, <laughs> Uh, these three functions binary oct and hexagon functions to convert one form to another right so we can convert from binary to octagon or uh, octal to hexadecimal using these functions up so let's look at this function how it works in python so if we do uh, if you have if we do binary of two three four you get the binary value of of this one two three four right if we do binary of octal value one two three four we get the binary value you can do let's convert hexadecimal to binary so we get the binary value similarly we can do hex two three we get the hexadecimal value so we can convert from binary to hexadecimal right similarly we can do octal and we can convert binary to octal as well 0 b 1 0 so this way we can convert any one form to another form right now if we have hexadecimal binary and the octal value in a string format it is enclosed in a single or double quote how do we convert it into integer so if we have
So if you have binary value like this and we use int function, so it will convert this value into integer like this. We get the 5. What happens if the same value is enclosed within single code or double code? That makes it string. So what happened? Int doesn't work. So this function int will not work on the string string value of any of these values. So in in that case, we can use 0b, which is a binary value, comma. We have to tell the interpreter that it is a binary value in a decimal form. So we have to tell, so we can write 2 here. Why 2? Because binary has a base of 2. So we have to tell the interpreter that it is a binary with a base of 2 here. Now it will convert. Similarly, we can do if we have octal value, we can use 8 here because octal has a base of 8. So it will give us answer. If we go, if hexadecimal is enclosed within single quote or double quote, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have to tell it has a base of 16. We get the answer like this. Okay. So if any of the above um, is in string format, string format, then if we want to convert it into integer format, we need to to use int function hex value or octal value or binary value right by base value so if it is hexadecimal value if it is hexadecimal value we have to use 16 if it is octal value we have to use the value 8 if it is binary value we have to use a base 2 like this right okay let's look at one more format we can also use format to convert so if we have say binary value and i want to convert it into octal value i get in octal format and if you want okay binary value again 0101 0, 1. so look at these two value here so when i use just o here so i'm telling the interpreter convert this binary value into octal form like this one so we get 12 but if i want octal in the form of like o and then uh, in the form of like zero and then o and then the octal value then we have to use like this we go hash and then octal pay attention to this answer here look at this one now so in here we get just like 12 in here we get like in a proper format like we get 0 o and then 12 okay so let's do one more format i want to convert hexadecimal value 1 2 3 4 into binary value so i will just write b here binary it will convert into binary value but i want it in a proper format i want it in the format of like 0 b and then the the binary value okay so for that i can do format 0 x 1 2 3 4 and then hash b like this now look at this value to here now now this is is a proper format it start with like 0 b 1 0 here it doesn't have a 0 b okay so we can use format as well to convert one value to another 
or we can use a uh, function like hex opt and and binary okay we, it's, it's very important like when we do data types to understand exactly like what happened when we store any value within the variable like what happened behind the screen like so we should know like when i do a is equal to 10 so a is an integer data type right and i store 10 within a so what happened behind the screen one thing we need to first understand every single thing every single thing in python is in the form of object everything so when we create a is equal to 10 so what happened is an object 10 is created right now that 10 object uh, that object 10 is stored somewhere in the memory right the variable a will will just point to the value of the memory where 10 is stored so we will say object 10 instead of just saying 10 because everything in python is object so when i do a is equal to 10 b is equal to 10 c is equal to 10 so what happened is object 10 is created it will be stored somewhere in the memory now variable a will just point or refer to that memory where the 10 is stored variable b will refer to where the object 10 is stored variable c will refer to where the object 10 is stored but the variable a b and c will not store the value 10 within the variable no it will just point to the variable it will just point to the data wherever it is stored into the memory so it will be like something in this form so this is a memory here okay so variable 10 will be so this data object 10 will be stored here and a b and c will just point to this data object 10 so that's what happened that's how the data object 10 is created and it is stored in the memory so to check them to check the memory the location where data 10 is stored we can use the function id id is used to check where the object is stored so let's do the practical on this one we go up in our shell here okay so we created a is equal to 10 okay now we, we're gonna check where the 10 is stored id a so it is stored at this address so if we do b is equal to 10 c is equal to 10 let's check the id of b id of c so pay attention here the id of a and b and c are all same right so 10 is stored somewhere in one location in the memory and all this variable which have the same value is pointing at the same address right so this is how it works now so all the primary data types are immutable primary data types are integer float boolean complex and string so when i say that data types are immutable that means once we create the data type we cannot destroy the data type so if i do a is equal to 10 and then do a is equal to 20 so what happened is let's do this one first in the so i did a is equal to 10 okay it gives 10 now if i do a is equal to 20 i i just said all the data types primary data types like integer is an immutable so sh do you think that a is equal to 20 will work or not should it let the uh, python to change the value of a from 10 to 20 let's see enter actually it did so what happened before it was 10 now it becomes 20 so if it is immutable how come the python is letting the value change from a to 20 let me tell you so this is what happened so when i did 
So when I do a is equal to 20, a was pointing at 10. Then I'll change from 10 to 20. Now a has a value of 20. Now pay special attention here. The value 10 that is created in the memory will stay as it is. It will not, it will not be destroyed. The pointer that was pointing to 10 will be removed from here and it will point to a new data object 20 created at some other location, some other a memory location, right? So now A is pointing at 20, but 10 is still there. It's not destroyed. So this is this happened because I said integer is immutable. If it would have been mutable, like you can change the value, it would have happened. If I say 10 here, A was pointing as 10, then I did A is equal to 20, then 10 would have been replaced by 20 like at this location right here. 10 would have been destroyed and then 20 would have been created and stored at the same location if it would have been mutable. Now because it is immutable, the value 10 is not destroyed, it, it stays where it is. A new value 20 is created somewhere in the memory and the and the A will now point to a new location. This happened because it is immutable. Now it's very important to understand this concept. So all the primary data types, string, float, complex they are all immutable just like integer so they their value will stay where it is in the memory it will not be destroyed a new object will be created at a, at a new location and the and the variable point at a new location right now one important thing from minus 5 to 256 every time we start the python proof every time we start the python the interpreter will create this value minus 5 to 256 somewhere in the memory it will create this value from minus 5 to 256 and store it somewhere in the memory right now as i said everything is an object in python so this value minus 5 to 256 are object which is created by the python when we start the python program for the first time and it will be stored somewhere into the memory as an object now, now everything in python is object so all the data types are object so now question may be asked like in in other languages you know like um when we have for all the data types like integer data types float string boolean data types we have a fixed size for example, I think in C++, it's like 4 byte for an integer and then for a string, it's 4 or 6 byte. So, all the data types in other languages have a fixed size, either 4 byte, 6 byte, 7 byte, 8 bytes. But in Python, all the data types have no fixed size. So, question may be asked, what is the size of, say, for example, integer data types in Python, right? So, the answer should be, um, integer has no fixed size. Th then the question might, might be asked, well, how come the integer has no fixed size or the float or the string data types in Python has no fixed size? Then we, we can always answer by saying that because everything in Python is data, is object, so all the data types, whether integer, float, string, boolean, they are all object. So that's why they don't have a fixed size because object does not have a fixed size. They can grow, they can grow in any size, okay? so. That's why none of the data types in Python have any fixed size. Now, when we start Python, when we start Python, what interpreter does is it will create object for integer data type from within this range from minus 5 to 256. So the integer number from minus 5 to 256 is created when we start the Python. When we when we start the Python, interpreter will create the data integer data object for these numbers from minus five to two fifty six. Okay. Now, the reason why Python does that because the number within this range is oftenly used a lot is used oftenly in the in the programming. That's why Python create the integer data object 
for this number within this range. Now the question might be asked, what, what why would Python do? Uh, why would Python Python do that? Why would Python create uh, integer data object for this number? Now, creating object is a very expensive process in any computer language. It takes a lot of resources and time and memory, right? So in order to in order to increase the execution speed, because we use this number within this range all the time in Python programming, Python will create, when we start the Python, Python will create the integer data object within this range once with, uh, only once and it will save somewhere in the memory. So when we create any number within this range, our variable will just point to the, uh, that uh, integer data object created somewhere in the memory. So it will not be created the moment we we uh, we assign like um, value ten to any variable. So if I do like this, if I create a variable like a is equal to ten, now the Python will not create a new integer data object ten. That data object ten because it it falls within this range, it is already created when we started the Python and is saved somewhere in the memory. So what interpreter will do is it will point our variable a to that data object created and stored somewhere in the memory right so this way it, it saves time and the execution speed now the question might be asked so python create data uh, integer data object for from minus 5 to 256 to save execution time right a lot of execution time will be saved if python can create integer data object for like from minus 1 million from from minus 1 million to to plus 1 million right if python can create an object for this number range in the beginning then it will save so much execution execution time because we might need a number more than 256 we might need number less than 5 right now python has to keep a balance between because Object creation process is a, is a very expensive process. is a very expensive process, and it takes a lot of time. Now, if Python had to create integer data object for from range minus one million to plus million, it might take Python to finish uh, doing all this process. Probably, it might take Python like a whole day to do this, right? So, imagine if I started a Python to do some coding, and it take one day for the Python interpreter to start, literally start, like it, it, took, it will take one day to start, right? So I don't think then people will uh, gonna continue coding with Python. They're gonna, they're gonna move to some other language, right? So that's why Python cannot create integer data object for such a large range because it will take a lot of time. So it only it does of, from the range from like minus five to 256 because it does not take much uh, long time and it saves a lot of execution time because often we need number within this range, right? So if we do now, so if I do a is equal to 10, 10 is already created when we started Python and saved somewhere in memory. So our variable a will now point to the memory where a is stored. If I do b is equal to 10, because 10 is already created and saved in one memory location, our b will also point to the same memory location where a is pointing. If I do c is equal to 10, so it's gonna look somewhat like this in the memory. Because 10 falls within this range between minus 5 to 256, it is already created and stored into the memory somewhere at some uh, uh, some location. So when we did a is equal to 10, interpreter will take this a and it will point to this 10 a some, stored somewhere in the memory. When we did b is equal to 10, because 10 is already created and saved, so b will point to the same memory location. If when we do c is equal to 10, C will point to the same memory location, right? So let's check if this is true. We go to Python shell. So we did a is equal to 10. 
b is equal to 10 c is equal to 10 now we know the function id that is used to get the the memory address for any variable so check the for a id for b id for c if you guys pay attention here the address of all these variable a b and c are exactly the same because they're pointing at one location where 10 installed right now and this happened only for number minus 5 to 256 let's do so what happened if we do a is equal to 257 b is equal to 257 right now because 257 it doesn't fall within the range when we do a is equal to 257 a new integer data object will be created and saved in a memory location then when we do b is equal to 257 a new integer data type will be created and stored in a different memory location so this time the memory address of a and b variable should be different let's check that out so i'm storing a is equal to 257 b is equal to 257 id of a is id of b so if you guys look at the the address even though the variables are same a is equal to 257 b 257 the the address is different this one and this one is a different address right so this this one we should we, we should know because it's a very important concept and often it is asked in the interviews okay so we are done with the integer now let's do the okay so our next data type is float so any number with a decimal is float so a is a float here we can do some other number anything with a decimal or we can also write float as in this format a is equal to 2.3 e to the power 2 right so this will be replaced as 2.3 multiply 10 to the power 2 so this is how e gonna be replaced so e gonna be replaced by 10 and then the value after that that is 2 so it's gonna be 10 to the power 2 right so let's check this one here a is equal to 3.45 so a is 3.45 or we can do a is equal to 3.45 e to the power 3 so e gonna be replaced by 10 so it's gonna be 2.45 multiply 10 to the power 3 like this okay so this is our float and next data type is complex now complex is of the form of a plus b j right now this j where a is a real part b is an imaginary part right now this j we cannot replace j with i k l m it has to be j and j always come after number uh, b so it always come after b it cannot j cannot come before b okay so let's check in the shell so we have a is equal to 3 plus 4j right like this now if we do a now we cannot write a is equal to 3 plus 4 i or k or l if i do this it's gonna give error and i we can't even do like this a 3 plus we cannot write uh, j in front of uh, number 4 so if i do 3 plus j 4 it will give us error so it has to be 3 plus 4 j in this form now to access the real real part we can do a dot real we get 3 if we do a dot imaginary we get 4 So if I have a is equal to 3 plus 4j a dot real it gives us 3 a dot imaginary gives us 4 right now 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 here 3 is a real part and 4 is a 
imaginary part now real and imaginary can be integer so we can have both uh, the real and the imaginary part as imaginary part as integer we can also have real and imaginary part as float we can only have real part as boolean we cannot have the imaginary part as boolean we cannot have real and imaginary part as string we cannot use string in real or imaginary part so let's look this one here so 3 is integer 4 is integer it works 2.3 so real part is float imaginary part is float it works fine right now so we can have real part as boolean but not the imaginary part as boolean let's try true plus false and we cannot use string for real or imaginary so let's try string here some string say hi plus hello j it doesn't work let's try a string in the form of number plus 2j so string doesn't work for real part string doesn't work for imaginary part okay next data type is string now string is a it's a very it's a very big uh, this topic gonna be really big string so let's um uh, before we do string let's do this one first integer <coughs> Now, using this function, using int function, we can convert float to integer. Okay. So, if we uh, using this function, we can convert float to integer. We can convert boolean, that will be true or false, to integer. It is possible. We can convert string. We can convert string to integer only if string is of integer form okay we cannot convert complex data type to integer okay so let's try this all in our iron shell so we can convert float to integer so say the float is 2.3 we get 2 right let's try end of boolean let's do true it give us 1 because internally the value of true is always 1 if we do end of false it give us zero right so we can convert boolean to int we can convert float value to int value and we can convert string to int only if the string is of integer type like we have any number like within the single or double quote two three four five whatever number like this it will perfect right but if we do integer of if we do or if we try to convert string of like a letters you know any letter like this it will give us error okay so it can convert string to integer only if it is of the integer type and if you try to do int of any complex number it will give us error okay now we have float float function so we can convert integer to float possible 
you can convert boolean to float as possible we can convert string to float only if the is in the so string to float is possible only if the string is in the form of integer or float data type data type that means if integer number or the float number is enclosed within single or double quote then that can be converted into float okay and we cannot convert complex to float so let's check it out so first we're gonna convert int to float it works perfect right let's try boolean to float works let's try in boolean again to float that works perfect right now the internal value of false is always zero internal value of true is always one so float has converted it into what into float value now let's try float of string but in the integer form it works perfect let's do float of string and now float form that works perfect let's try float to do a string of some some word hi now this will give us error okay let's try float of complex value 3 plus 2 plus 3 j it will give us error so float cannot be converted okay and let's go. next we have boolean so bool function we can convert integer into boolean so when we convert integer into boolean 0 is always converted into false and the rest of the number load can be converted into boolean 0, 0.0 is false and the rest of the float values are true string can be converted into boolean so empty string empty string like is false rest is true now if we create a string like single dot single code and space single code now this this will give us true if we use boolean function because space is also one character so it is not empty so this one here we created one space so it will be converted into true so anything within a single code any value is always considered as true and if it's empty like this one here like we created empty string like we just we just press single quote and then single quote there's nothing in between two single quotes so it is considered as it, it will be converted as into false okay 
then we have complex value complex value can be converted into boolean so any zero value and the rest is true okay so we have integer covered float covered string covered complex covered so these are all the primary data types so let's check in the idle so we have bool of integer give us true bool of integer with some other value three four five give us true bool of zero give us false so only boolean of zero gives us false and the rest of the integer type it gives us true let's do yeah float so we have float value 3.4 it gives us true we have float value 6.7 it gives us true only float value 0, 0.0 gives us false and therefore rest of the other uh, float values we get true right Let's do bool of 0 0.0000. So this is also a float value, right? It gives us false. Okay. So only 0, 0.0 or 0, 0.00 or what how many zero we can add at the end. It gives us false. For rest of the float values, we get true. Now list string. I have hello. It gives us true. I have I, we get true boolean of let's create so i just type single dot single quote and then space and then close it close it with a single quote let's see what happened to this value we get true so even the space value is considered as a as a one character value and we get true for that only string value that gives us false is if we just type single code and then we close it again like this so there is no value between this single quotes so this only this value will give us false in case of a string okay now let's do complex value so we have 2 plus 3 j we get true right if we do 0 plus 2j we get awesome zero plus 2j it will give us true now both the real and imaginary part of the value has to be non zero for the value to be true. Okay, so in complex we have real part and the imaginary part. If the real part, so both the real and the imaginary part has to be zero for the final result to be false otherwise for all other cases it will be true okay let's come back to our idle so if i do bool of this is real part right and then this is imaginary part so because both are non-zero we get true if i do bool of zero but the imaginary part is non-zero it will give us true if we do both real and imaginary part zero so we get false same thing goes with the float if we do 0, 0.0 plus 0, 0.0 j we get false for rest of the values we get true 
2.3 plus 0 is a now because the real part is non zero, so we get true. So we are done with here integer float string complex. Okay, let me close string str function now. Everything will be converted into string. So in case of a string, integer will be converted, float, complex, boolean, no issue. Let's try it. So str of integer number, we get string. str of float number, we get string. str of boolean value, we get string. str of some complex value we get string okay so with string we have no issue then we have complex number and the function is function c o m p l e x complex okay now in complex integer can be converted into complex for real and imaginary part right because in complex we have real and imaginary part if the real part is integer and the imaginary part is integer it can be converted into complex float can be converted into complex same thing goes with float both real and imaginary part if it's float value it can be converted into complex next we have boolean complex can we convert it into complex for real and imaginary part if the real and the imaginary part of the complex is true or false it can be converted into complex right then we have string String can be converted into complex. Now, in case of a string, string when we use string with the complex, the function complex will take only the real part. Only the real part will work. Not the imaginary part. And the real part has to be integer or float in string form. Okay, so let's go see the complex value now. So we do complex. So two comma three. So 2 is a real part and the 3 is an imaginary part. So it works perfect. We can even use just the real part as integer, not the imaginary. So real part we take 3. It works. Okay. So here the imaginary part as you can see is 0. If we do comma 3, right, it gives us error. So if we do zero it gives us zero there okay so in in this here the real part is zero and the imaginary part both are zero okay complex if we use now for the float type 2.3 as a real part 4.5 as a imaginary part so it works perfect right we can do complex even with a float value only the real value we don't we don't we're not using imaginary here so it it works perfect okay so for integer complex is working for float is working perfect let's come to boolean now so we have real part as boolean and imaginary part as boolean 
so it works perfect complex let's try different value real part we have and we have imaginary part it works perfect right now let's do string so if we use string now string in a if you if you use complex with the string it only works for the real part we cannot use the imaginary part as a parameter here okay so if i use one two three any integer value it works perfect as you can see now if i do complex of any float value in the string form 2.3 it works perfect okay but if i use any non number in a string form like i do hello it gives us error okay if i do complex of some integer in the string form and i also use the with the real part i also i'm using the imaginary part so two one look at this it gives us error okay so complex can only take cannot take second argument if the first is a string so only one argument it will take and that will be the real part okay so with this we are done with the conversion now there is something more i want to do in the boolean i forgot to do this one earlier when we were discussing boolean now, now there are two famous operators in uh, python one is and operator other is or operator one is not operator okay so in case of a boolean when we do true and true we get the value as true when we do true and false we get the value as false now when we use and operator if any of the value the first one or the second one is false the answer is always false if you do false and true because the first value is false so we get false right if you do false and false answer is false for sure right now in comparison with this one when we do or operator true or true we get true now with the or operator if one of the value is true the answer is always true okay true or false is equal to true false or false is equal to false so in our operator for the answer to be false both the values has to be false right whereas in the and operator if one of the values is false the final result is always false okay, let's do true here true so if both the values are false then we only we get false in or when we are doing the or operator false or false is equal to false so we talk about boolean data types but uh, we cannot talk about and operator or operator and not operator in boolean so now this is now this is very important so when we do so true and false are boolean right as we know so when we do true and true it's always true when we do true and false it's false when we do false and true it's false and then false and false is always false so when one of the boolean operator value is false in case of and operator we always get false 
only when two, when two values of boolean are true and we do and the answer is true otherwise the answer is always false now in case of an or operator is just the opposite of and operator so true or true is true now in the case of or operator is just the opposite of and operator so true or true is true okay so in the case of or operator is just the opposite of and operator so when we do true or true is true true or false is true false or true is true false or false is false so the only time in case of or operator the answer will be false is when both the values are false otherwise it's, it's true right now let's try to execute this in our, our idle so we did so true and true is true true and false is false so when one value in case of an and operator is false the value is always false now false and true is false and then false and false is false right now let's check the or operator so true or true will be true true or false will be true false or true will be true and then false or false will be false so in case of a in case of an and operator only when that when both the values are true we get true for the rest we get false Whereas in case of our operator, we get false only when both the values are false. Otherwise, the value is always true in case of our operator, right? Now, we have something called relation operator. So, greater than or greater than or equal to, less than or less than and equal to these all are relation operator now if we use relation operator with the boolean the answer is always true or false okay so in case of a and or not operator oh we haven't we haven't tried the not operator let's try let's go back and see the not operator so not operator always give the opposite answer so if i do not true it gives us false if I do not false, it will give us true. Okay. So, in case of an AND or NOT operator, if the values are if the values on the both the sides of AND or both the sides of a OR are boolean, I mean true or false, the answer is always boolean, always. Okay. Now, in case of the relation operator, if the value we are comparing like in relation operator we always compare values so in case of a relation operator the answer is always boolean that is true or false okay so if you do 2 is greater than 3 right or 3 is greater than 4 or 5 is greater than or equal to 3 so the answer of these will be always true or false so you just have to remember right so in case of a relational operator the answer is always either true or or it's false so let's check that here in our pattern so if we do 2 greater than 3 it gives us false 3 greater than 2 we should be true right 4 greater than or equal to 3 true right and then 5 greater than or is equal to 6 give us false right so relational operator we always get the answer either true or false now now if we have relational operator on both side of and or or operator the answer is always true or false so what i mean by is if i do 2 greater than 1 
and then on and operator and then 3 greater than 4 so this will be this will evaluate into so we know 2 greater than 1 is it will be true and then on and operator and then 3 greater than 4 will be false so this will evaluate to this one true and false and we know the answer of true and false is always false so when one of the value in and operator is false the answer is always false so what i'm trying to say here is with and operator if we use a relational expression so these so these are like an expression here so 2 greater than 3 3 these are like expression so if we use a relational expression on both side of the and operator or or operator the end result is always true or false so let's do 2 greater than 1 or 3 greater than 4 right so this will be 2 greater than 1 is will be true or 3 greater than 4 will be false so true or false the answer will be always true so let's try this one out so 2 greater than 1 and 3 greater than 4 so 2 greater than 1 and 3 greater than 4 right so we get false let's check our answer here so 2 greater than 1 and 3 greater than 4 is false let's try the OR operator 2 greater than 1 or 3 greater than 4 2 greater than 1 or 3 greater than 4 is true right so when we use a relational expression on both side of AND operator or OR operator the end result is always true or false okay now what happen if if we use non boolean non boolean value with and or or operator just remember this one if we use non boolean value with and operator or or operator the result is always non boolean so let me write this down this is very important okay so if we use non boolean value with the and operator or or operator the end result is always non boolean so what I'm trying to say is if I use one so one is is neither true or false so one is not uh, one is a non boolean value so if I use one and three which is also non boolean the result will be always non boolean so the answer here will be not true not false it will be something else okay so I will tell you how this is calculated so now in Python all the numbers 1 2 3 all the numbers are stored as internally as true it's always stored as true whereas the value 0 is stored as false okay so all the numbers are stored as true and 0 is stored as false right and then when python when python come across this kind of expression like 1 and 3 so what happen is let me write it down here hold on in a new page so 1 and 1 and 3 right so internally 1 will be stored as true okay so when python come across this kind of expression so he will do this uh, this calculation like behind the behind the screen like we won't be able to see what's going on right so but internally this is how it is, it is calculated so one internally will be stored as true and then comes and and three will also be internally stored as true right so when the first value is true in case of an and operator this is very important when the first value is true in the case of an AND operator the result is always a second value always this is important I'm gonna write it down okay so in case of an AND operator when both the values on both the sides of AND operator are non boolean 
I mean that is not true or that is not false, then the result will be non-Boolean. Okay. Now, how the result is calculated is this is how it is calculated. When the first value is true, so in internally one is stored as true and three will be stored as true. Okay. So when the first value is true, the result is always a second value in case of an AND operator. Always. Okay. So let's try this in our idle. So one and three. Now one is true stored internally and three is also internally stored as true. So the first value is true and we just I just mentioned when the first value is true in case of an AND operator, the result is always a second value. Okay. So let's see. See that? So if I do two and three, the answer will be three. If I do four and five, the answer will be the second value always. Right? So what happened here? So the first value is zero. Zero is stored internally as false. Right? So when the first value is false, the answer is always false. We did this one here in case of an AND operator. If any of the value, if the first value is, if the if any of the value is false, the answer is always false, right? So here, again, pay attention to this one here. When the first value is true, in case of an AND operator, the result is always a second value, always in case of AND operator. Now, if I do 0 and 3, now here, the answer will be, here the answer will be 3, and here, the answer will be 0, right? Why? Because 0 is stored internally as false and the 3 is stored internally as true. So, so these, these so if, if you remember these two points, we should be able to calculate this one. So, when the first value is true in case of an AND operator, the result is always a second value. Doesn't matter what's, what's the second value, it's always second value. When, okay, so when the first value is false, the result is always a first value. Python will not even bother to check the second. What, what's the second value? No. It, it will see, okay, the, the first value is 0. When I say 0, it is stored internally as false. So, it knows this is false. It's going to give the first value. That is 0. Let's try. Let's check it again, okay? So, when I do 12 and 15. So, 12 is true and 15 is true. Now, because the first value is true, it's going to give the second value, 15. If I do 0 and 4, here 0 is stored internally as false. So Python will not even bother to look at the second value that is 4. It's it going to give the answer 0. Okay. Now let's do the OR operator. Now, it's just the opposite in case of OR operator. So when we do 2 OR 3, Okay, so inter internally 2 is stored as true because 2 is non zero, and then we have OR, and then 3 is stored as true, right? So, in case of an OR operator, if the first value is true, if the first value is true, the answer is always a first value. Python will not even bother to look at the second value. So, here the answer will be 2, right? Let's try this. So, 2 or 9. So, 2 is a, is stored internally as true. So, it's going to give us 2 like this, okay? So, you don't even bother to look at the second value in case of an OR operator. Now, let's the, check the other scenario. Now, if we have first value as false or 3 right so when the first value is true in case of our operator it always give us the first value you don't even bother to look at the second value now when the first value is false I mean it is 0 right when the first value is 
false it gives us the second value okay so in case of our 0 or 3 we're gonna get answer 3 so it's just a couple of points if you remember this so we should be all right in uh, when it comes to calculating this kind of uh, this kind of expression so if you do 0 or 3 I'm gonna get 3 right if I do 0 or okay let's do it so if it when we do 0, 2 or 3 answer should be 2 in case of our operator we get the first value if we do 2 and 3 the answer will be 3 it's just the opposite of our operator so in case of our operator when the first value is true it will give us the, the first value in case of an AND operator if the first value is true it will give us the second value so in case of an AND operator it will be 3 okay so if we do 0 or 4 so when the first value is false in case of an OR operator we always get the second value 4 now same thing if we do with the AND operator and 4 now because the first value is false so the answer is false so answer will be 0 you don't even bother to look at the second value in case of an AND operator okay all right so this is done now okay our next topic is string now which is a very big topic I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna finish all the data types in this video but the video is already getting so long so I'm gonna end this video right here and if you guys like anything from if you guys learn anything from this video please like and subscribe and share this video with your friends and family okay and i'm gonna see you in next video thank you bye bye